Hey there planners, it has been a while since I did an update to my work planning system and shared what's working, what's not working. That's what I plan to do today. I specifically want to share with you three of the work planning tools, uh, sort of system tools that I have been using that I don't know that I would have made it through the first quarter of 2022 without. So go grab your planners and let's get planning. All right, so first up on my list of three tools that have been so critical to success for me in work planning is my planners. So note that I'm saying planners. When I started out the year and introduced my work planner, I did a thorough detailed walkthrough of the digital planner that I was using for work. I will have that and all the supplies I'm talking about today listed down in the description box below. So if you're interested in seeing how I set up my work planner, um, it was a digital planner that I made myself. Um, please go check out that video for everything that's included. It is a very detailed um, and uh, personalized planner for me. If you're interested in building your own digital planner, I actually have a video series all about how to build your own digital planner. You can check that out down in the description bo box below as well. It's actually not as hard as you think. Um, if I could figure it out, you can figure it out because I'm not really a tech expert. <laughs> so anyway, that has been kind of the backbone of my work planning system and I am still very much using that. You will note that I have added an element. So I am not going to go through this or open this or flip through this because it is my work planner. And as I have shared many, many times before when it comes to work planning for me, my work is confidential. Um, I'm not able to share details and this planner is full of scribbly details. So this is actually a Hobonichi cousin. Um, I has moved to a Hobonichi cousin in my personal planning. I have lots of videos about uh, that, sharing all the details of how I'm using each of the sections. I went ahead and picked up a second Hobonichi cousin because what I found myself needing to do was jot down scribbly things that weren't necessarily um, going to be permanent. They were just kind of brainstorming, brain dumping, things like that. And I really like to keep the digital planner for work very clean and uh, a very good record of the, the work that I'm doing. So this year I happen to be assigned to a very large project. I am serving as a uh, PMO uh, for a, a very large enterprise-wide effort and record keeping is so important. So that is really the primary function of my digital planner and it's working great for me. Um, but I did need a place to scribble. I needed a place to scribble some notes, um, kind of brain dump things, particularly when it comes to my weekly reviews to get everything out of my head. I needed a place to do that that was much more physical that I could flip through easily, um, you know, hold two pages open at the same time. Um, I, I just needed that ability and I felt like I needed something physical, not digital to serve that purpose. So I have added in a Hobonichi cousin to do that. Now, while I'm not going to flip through this and show you the details, because again, it is professional and confidential. I can't, I can't share that. I am going to talk about one of the ways that I'm using it, which is my second tool, and that is my weekly review. So I have talked about my weekly review process in the past. I have a detailed video kind of walking through every step of that, and I will leave that listed down in the description box below. This is my weekly review checklist. It's double-sided and this is available as a freebie for you. It is very tailored to what works for me. I would encourage you to really think about what's gonna work for you. Um, but basically, this checklist has three steps. First of all, it's a cleanup session, meaning I clean up my workspace, sort any documents, papers, sticky notes, all of that stuff. I, I look at my planner for the week that has just been completed. I typically complete my weekly review 
on Friday, I have dedicated time on my calendar to do this. That's how important it is for me. So I go back through my planner status, any open action items. I note anything that's been delegated or is incomplete or canceled. I make sure I mark that out. I also spend time getting to inbox zero in my email inbox. I complete anything that takes less than two minutes. So if it's just a get it done, reply, respond, send an attachment, whatever it is, I get that done. And then I move everything else to some designated folders that I also have space on my calendar set aside to focus on. And those are to read, waiting on, and take action. Um, so if it's going to take me more than two minutes, an, something in my inbox, I will put it in those folders and then use the time I have set aside to deal with that. Step two is a brain dump. And brain dumping is so important for me. The work that I'm doing now has so many parts and pieces and is such a large, you know, entity that I am managing that I really have to brain dump to make sure I'm staying on top of everything. Um, so I pull out my brain dump triggers. I turn to a blank page in this Hobonichi Cousin, which is typically that daily page. The week I use the weekend pages since I'm not obviously using uh, weekends for work. I use the weekend pages every week, between every week, uh, to really capitalize on brain dumping. I set a timer for at least 10 minutes. Um, sometimes it takes much longer than that, but I make sure that I use that full time. I don't stop just when my brain stops spitting things out because more will come. I've learned that. And then I capture all the things that come to mind. I avoid doing the work, so I'm not trying to get things done. I'm just trying to get things out of my head. I don't try to judge the things that I'm capturing, like, oh, that doesn't need to be there. I don't do that. I just capture it and keep moving. I don't filter and I eliminate all distractions. So phone goes on silent you know, email notifications go on silent. I'm just really focused on that. Now, what is on the back side of this weekly review checklist is my brain dump trigger list. So projects started, look into items, things on the org chart, you know, things that I need to do for the folks that I am mentoring. So minty items, um, kudos to send, metrics items. There's just a lot on here. You can see three full columns of prompts on here. And this is really just to get my brain going. So once I get through that initial, these are at the top of mind items, I come to this trigger list and I start going through each one and capturing anything that comes to mind. Again, this is a free printable that I make available to you. Hop over to Planning A on Instagram. Make sure that you are following me there and then uh, check out the links for freebies and this is there for you to print and use. Again, you may want to alter this for your own needs because there might be on your trigger list, there might be different items than what I have on mine. So this is a tool that I don't know how I would have made it through the first quarter without. I am relying so heavily on these for planning things, making sure that I'm prepared for due dates that are upcoming, making sure that I'm tracking what my whole team is doing. Um, this has been a really, really important process for me. So, um, and I'm using the Hobonichi Cousin to capture a lot of that and then really getting the record keeping uh, items, how things turn out into my digital planner. So this is my second tool. On to my third tool. All right, for the final tool, I am first of all going to give a tremendous amount of credit to Sarah Cannon at Heart Breathings for the inspiration for this. So if you haven't ever checked out that channel, I highly encourage you. It's Heart Breathings. Sarah Cannon is the um, owner, the fantastic business lady over there who is planning and giving great ideas. She's an author um, and she's a mom and she's, you know, running a career. She's a boss lady running a career and her planning and organization ideas just strike a chord with me that is fantastic. She is amazing. Go check her out. I will have her channel linked down below. She has a tremendous amount of videos, a lot over years of working with Kanban boards. And if you're not familiar with Kanban boards, I wasn't either, but gosh, what a great black hole to fall down into. Uh, basically, it is a visual mechanism to uh, kind of track your work, the things you need to get done down at the task level through three categories to do, doing and done. And um, I started using some of this methodology 
in a messy, unorganized way very early this year. Um, and just being able to visually see things move through the categories and also manage all the things that I needed to work on at the same time. Because the truth is, as human beings, as much as we would like to think we can multitask, we actually cannot. We can really only do one thing at a time. And, um, you know, maybe that's not completely true when we're being moms. Um, moms can do many things at one time, like keep kids alive and, you know, uh, other fantastic items. But, um, you know, in reality, it is really hard to be tackling more than one task at a time. And this is a method and a tool that really helps keep that in front of us. It also helps with scheduling, knowing, you know, how much time something is going to take and in what order. And so what I'm going to do today is I actually went ahead and got some supplies. I'm going to be setting up this, the same tool for myself, for my personal, some of the personal projects that I'm going to be working on. Since I can't really share a lot of detail about the work projects that I'm using this tool for. I thought I would share with you how I'm using it for some of my personal tools. It'll be a lot easier for me to show you and talk to you about this. Again, tremendous amount of inspiration from Sarah Cannon at Heart Breathings for this. I am so, I have binged all of her Kanban board um, videos. She posts quarterly updates and annual setups. It's just fantastic. I highly recommend that you go check that out because a lot of my inspiration came from there. So what do I have here? Let me just kind of get to the bottom of the pile. So you'll see that I have a lot of different colored sticky notes. Those are going to be key. And then I have three boards. These are from Amazon. I'll have all the supplies listed down below. These are cork boards, um, very basic square 12 by 12 cork boards. I've got three of them. And those are for my three categories. I have printed on sticky notes uh, my three categories. So here's my to do and I have in the works and done. And I will use those to designate these boards as those and then start to capture what tasks are associated with which projects on the board. Now the thought is I put it on here on the to-do board when I am in the process. I know I need to get this done. This is kind of my backlog space. This is where I'm holding all the things that I need to get done. And then the next section is the in the works section. So this means I am actually actively working on this item. This is something that I'm working on right now. And then the third section is the done section. Now, this is the part that it, when I'm using this for work, this is the hardest one for me to keep up with because honestly, as soon as something is done, I don't care about it anymore. Like I've moved on, I'm ready to keep going and knocking things off the to-do list. But what I have learned and, um, you know, by really forcing myself to use this section, it's really important to keep track of what is done because it gives you a measure of success. It tells you how long it takes time to do things. It also tells you what may not be as important as you originally thought it was. So if you're having a hard time moving things into the done list, then maybe it's really not the priority for you. So this is actually a really important section and it's teaching me um, how important it is to monitor when things get done. So what I'm going to do, the first step I'm going to take is I am going to assign some of my projects that I currently have, personal projects that I currently have, uh, a sticky note color. So I've got, you know, uh, seven different sticky note, seven, yeah, seven different sticky note colors to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and assign projects to a sticky note color. Now that I have my four projects, I'm only going to go with four right now. I'm going to start with four. Um, now that I have my four projects color coded and laid out, I am going to start using sticky notes and capturing each individual task associated with getting these things done. And what I want to do is focus on the smallest possible tasks. So these are tiny chunks. These are things that would be a to do, not big, broad, multiple step items. So I wouldn't put, you know, um, research and draft initial, you know, paper. I wouldn't put that because that is multiple steps. So I'm going to break it down to the tiniest steps and just kind of lay them out here uh, as I go. All right. So 
it's a mess. <laughs> but what I've done is taken each of those four and mapped out kind of messy in sticky notes all the individual steps that they need. So I just did this on my table um, and you know it's kind of messy. I don't even care that the handwriting is bad because it's only for me. Um, and now what I'm going to do is move these onto my to-do board. Um, and I should have said I printed these sticky notes out. Um, if you are interested in you know, printing your own sticky notes, I do have a whole video on how you can do that. Um, I, the sticky notes I knew probably wouldn't stick so well on the cork board and would get you know, a little tired after sticking and re-sticking and moving and things like that. So I actually bought these teeny tiny little um, thumbtacks. Oh gosh, please don't let this explode everywhere. So what I can do is actually use these to um, hold everything down. All right, so what I'm going to do is move everything on the to-do board kind of in order in rows of the different um, projects um, so that I can start using them. All right, so here is what my initial setup of my to-do board looks like. Um, and it's actually very satisfying to know that all the things I need to do for those four projects are right here. And what I can do is hey, I'll have these hanging on, on the wall um, where I, you know, spend a lot of time looking. And, you know, when it's time to start the yellow project, I will take step one and move it to in the works. And I'm working on that. And when I'm done with that, I can move it to the done board and then go to the next step. Um, it also keeps visually for me, it's really nice to see all the things that I'm currently working on. If this board looks anywhere close to this, then it's out of control, right? I can't do all of those tasks at the same time. So it's very pleasing to, you know, be able to manage, um, what you're working on to just a very small amount because again, we can't do but so many tasks. There's only so many hours that I have in the day, um, particularly to devote to projects that aren't related to work because a lot of my time is spent working. So I hope that you enjoyed this setup and this demo. I hope that this makes sense to you. Again, I would highly encourage you to go take a look at Sarah Cannon's um, videos on Kanban boards. She has so much resource and information and knowledge and experience to share there. I think that her content is really, really valuable if this system seems like something that might help you get your arms around all the things you need to accomplish. All right, so there's an update on my work planning system and the three tools that have really kept me productive and moving and head above water in the first quarter of 2022. I would love to hear your comments down below and your questions. What is your planning system like? How has it changed since the beginning of the year? What tools are you finding so useful as part of your planning system um, that they're really helping you take it to the next level and crush goals? So leave all of that down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Subscribe to Plan and Annie for more content like this. And as always, thanks for planning with me.